Hey, what's happening, everybody? How's it going on this wonderful Monday? Um, welcome to another edition of Monday Manor. Uh, praying that all is well with you and your family on this beautiful day. Uh, Want to uh, start out by thanking all of our guests that showed up on yesterday for Family and Friends Day. Can't say enough about the powerful word uh, that uh, Pastor Belinda Kelly preached and shared with us in that uh, morning service. And then the time afterwards was just uh, uh, exciting. It was just uh, extraordinary. I had, had a wonderful time of fellowshipping with the people, even uh, being as hot as it was outside on yesterday. But um, thank God for all of you who came and uh, spent time with us, uh, for all of our friends, all our families who, who, who came in. Uh, Spent time with us, uh, even in the worship service. Uh, just thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, getting ready for another edition here. Get ready. Uh, as T.D. Jakes would say, get ready, get ready for another edition of uh, Monday Manor. I uh, want to come to you just to encourage you a little bit. Uh, uh, that's the thing that um, has really been um, on me here uh, these last few weeks about uh, making sure that uh, the body of Christ is encouraged, uh, uh, and I, I, I want to make sure that, uh, and what what uh, I say I want to, but Holy Spirit wants to make sure that you are encouraged properly uh, in, in some things that um, uh, we have to really understand that we should be rooted and grounded in. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 talks about uh, and the apostle paul says that we we receive something and what we received uh from him was what he received first himself and that was uh that christ died for our sins and he was buried and then after three days he rose again and so uh with that being said and and, and you know i've unpacked that time and time again and it 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 always bears repeating uh, but it is a beautiful thing when you understand what Christ has done for you. Um, so I want to encourage those who have received Christ, who's walking with him, who's uh, allowing him to lead them uh, by Holy Spirit, uh, who's in the word of God. Uh, and, and, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of struggles. But, man, I don't want you to struggle with what Christ has done. For you, so here we are, another Monday night. Please come on in, uh, like and share as you come in. Like and share as you come in. For those of you who will catch us on the uh, replay, please like and share uh, this this time that we're going to spend together tonight. So Monday Manor, uh, this particular um, installment is called the Dispensation of Grace. Um, I'm not bringing you anything new. I'm not bringing anything new. I'm 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 getting you uh, firm. I'm 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 putting you in a position where you are solid. Uh, your foundation is built on nothing less. There is no other foundation that can be laid, but than the than the foundation that which has been laid, and that foundation is Christ. So I, that's that's all that's all we're doing here on Mondays. We're we're just. Uh, laying or, or making sure you understand what foundation has been laid. And if we're going to build, that's the only foundation we are going to build on. And that's by Christ and Christ alone. So Father, we thank you and give you praise for this time of fellowship around your word. Thank you for all these, your sheep that have come. Uh, we thank you, Father, that the word goes forth tonight unhindered by any satanic force. And it'll accomplish all that has been set out to do in the mighty name of Jesus, Yahshua, the Christ, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. You ought to give y'all some praise right there. All right, so the dispensation of grace. I, I, man, this this just helped change my life. Um, there's some things that uh, the, the, the Most High, uh, what he does is he prepares you. He, he kind of introduces you to some things and you start walking into those in those things. You you start experiencing some things. You, you really don't know what you're doing. Uh, that, that no no preacher can ever tell you that, that they just knew what they were doing. No, he brought us to it. And years ago, uh, I I I experienced the grace of God 
uh, not knowing what I was experiencing uh, with another brother in the Lord. When um, some, some news had come out about him and everybody I knew, uh, even my mother, told me, uh, stay away from that guy. Uh, you, you don't let him come to your church and you don't, you don't allow that to happen. Uh, but <laughs> what happened was I, I just knew in my heart, I knew in my spirit that this brother um, had to receive what Christ had done for him. And, and, and who was I to stand in the way of it? So I just asked questions that people didn't ask. People didn't take the time to ask. And the brother was honest enough to uh, answer those questions. And of course, we allowed him then to come and minister at our, at our, at our church at the time. And the place was packed, man. It was so many people there. It just blew my mind. And then, then the number of people who came up to him afterwards and shared things that they were struggling with. Uh, and he, he just w w was able to minister to them and, and get some of those guys set free. So the grace of God is uh, what, what, what is perfected. You know, there's a scripture that says, uh, uh, it's, it's Psalms 138, I believe. It says that uh, he's perfecting those things that concern us. And oftentimes what we do is uh, we, we start saying, oh yeah, God's perfecting that, that concerns me. And we start talking about our house and our car and our money and all of these other things. When the scripture says, and there's a semicolon behind uh, perfecting that, that concerns us. And then the semicolon, it says, your mercy. See, that's what he's perfecting in our lives, folks. He's not perfecting cars and houses. He's not, he's not perfecting, you know, all that stuff. Th th those things are fruit on a, on a, on a tree of righteousness. That, that house, that car, that loved one, that, that, that spouse, all of those are fruit on the house, on the tree of, of righteousness. So you got to get this tree first, you see. If you get this tree first, man, you can get all the other stuff. Uh, he, he, he freely gives us all the other things, but you, you, we, we have preached to people that they need this stuff first. And, 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 and they say our lives are not where they need to be if we don't have this in our life or that. No, you need the, the, the tree of righteousness in your life. And once you have that, man, hey, everything else is just par for the course. So let's get into this. When we start talking about dispensation, here's the definition. The definition is it's an administration or an economy. Uh, you know, like this, this, this economy that we're having here in America at this time, uh, it's, it, it was a different economy under Trump. It was a different economy under Obama. So <clears throat> this dispensation is a economy that we live in. It's a, it's, it's, it's considered the house rules. So grace is now the house rules for those who serve the most high God. The, the most high had uh, something uh, before called Old Testament, Old Covenant. We now live under the new covenant. And in this new covenant, the house rules are different from what they were doing the old covenant. Under the old covenant, it had the house rules that if you do this, he would do that. Now, the, the rules have changed, glory to God. He said, in this covenant, I am going to change your heart. I am going to uh, bring you to me. Uh, uh, um, uh, a brother won't have to teach another brother who I am because I'm going to show you who I am. Regardless of what people are doing, regardless of what people are saying, they know that the Most High exists. They know that the Lord of Lords and King of Kings really is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. If it were not so, they wouldn't fight him so. They wouldn't resist him so that, that there would be no such thing as an agnostic or atheist if he did not exist. Everybody wants to fight 
the name of Jesus, the name of Yahshua. They don't want to fight Buddha. They don't want to fight Muhammad. They don't want to fight any of that because uh, he's the only one that died for you. All the other people, all the other situations, they have to die for their God. But listen, our God died for us. That's why for my favorite scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, and Paul says, I'm giving to you what I first received. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again. I wish I could unpack that for you. Give me a little time if you will. Listen, when he died, he died as you. He died with all of your sin in his body. And when he went into the grave, he came up with a new body. What happened to all your sin? Still in the grave, glory to God. They were buried with that old body. That's why any man being Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things now are new and all things are of God. Isn't that wonderful? You just can't beat that. So here we are. This is the house rules. This is the economy we live on. We live under this economy. We, we live in under this administration, the administration of Christ. That's the administration we live under, folks. It is not the administration of Moses because the administration of Moses, of, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, is called the administration of death. Oh, glory to God. See, it's the spirit that gives life, but the letter killeth. And when you read Moses, the scripture says, to this day when you read Moses, there's a veil over your face that you, you can't see straight. Glory to God. Listen, it, it, it reminds me of Abraham. The scripture says that because Abraham believed, trust God, because he had faith in God, what happened was uh, he now was considered to be made right with God. But watch this. When Abraham took Lot with him, who, who was not supposed to go, Lot caused him not to be able to see. There was a veil because Lot's name means to obscure one's vision. And the law, all it can do is tell you where to go, tell you how far to go, it, it, but it can't give you a direction. It can't tell you which way to turn. It'll, it'll tell you that's the stop sign. You better stop at that stop sign. But I'm telling you, if you don't have the grace of God, if you don't understand what grace is all about, then you are going to just stay at the stop sign. You always, you, you, I mean, you stop true enough, but now you don't know which way to go. And I'm telling you, the grace of God comes to tell you which way to go. Uh, Titus says that the grace of God has appeared to all men and it brings salvation. Now, salvation is truly born again. It includes born again, but it also includes prosperity. It includes good health. It includes protection. It tells you, my goodness, I've got more in store for you. That's the grace of God. Now, Here's another thing. I want to give you a definition for grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. So nothing you and I could ever do to earn it. Grace is also, hear me real good, God's unfailing love. So what do you mean by that, uh, Bishop Chris? It, it simply means that there's nothing you or I could ever do to stop him from loving us. Hmm. David said like this, if you made, if I made my bed in hell, you'd be right there with me. Listen, love never fails. <laughs> it's, it's his love. Now, now th that kind of love will cause you to understand when you fail, when you make mistakes, when you sin, don't run from him, run to him. Glory to God, because he has an unfailing love. It's also that thing that surrounds you. It go before you. It works out things that you can't work out for yourself. It's his ability coming on you to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. That is grace. Grace is not a topic. Grace is not a subject. Grace is a person and his name is Yahshua, Jesus the Christ. If you don't get that, you miss grace. Because, you know, people say, well, you got to have a grace for this and you got to have a grace for that. Man, if you have Christ, he's the one that is the grace of God in your life. The grace of God is that uh, what Christ has done for us concerning what he's done for us. That's the grace of God. That's grace all day, every day, 24 seven. Amen. Now, let's move on a little bit. I want to show you something. 
here in Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, and for the sake of time, I'm going to read uh, from the New Living Translation. You can go back and read uh, King James in your, in your spare time. Um, but, but remember now, if it's going to be grace, if it's truly grace, you got to remember this, this one little thing. Uh, if there's never a command or something uh, forbidden, then uh, you, 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 gotta, you don't have a choice. Under the old covenant, you didn't have a choice. He said, if you do this, I'm going to do that. And under the old covenant, if you didn't do this, you, you just didn't get the blessing. Now it's a choice. He says, I set before you the day life and death, blessing, curses. Choose life that you and your seed may live. So it's a choice now. Uh, don't, don't, don't get caught up in a place where somebody say, you better do this or, or he's not going to do that. You, 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 can, you, you don't listen. We, we're going to live holy because of what he's done. Uh, we don't receive because of what we do. We receive because of what he's done. The, the reason why we do what we do is because of what he's done. I, I, I can't I can't move him by what I do. As a matter of fact, I live by Galatians chapter uh, uh, 2, verse 20. I live by the faith of the Son of God. It, it, it's, it's not my faith. It's his faith that I live by. See, because he's the author and the finisher of faith. Amen. Now, uh, King James says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Well, if you look in your King James Bible, that word our is italicized. So it didn't belong there. It was added by the translator. So it should just say he's the author and the finisher of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. What kind of faith? His faith. L listen, have faith. Faith in God, um, uh, Mark 11 says. Uh, well, the, the original translation says, have the faith of God. Listen, if, if it's going to happen for me, it's going to happen because I have the God kind of faith. Oh, glory to God. So it's his faith. Now, remember, he, he's given us a choice. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 simply says it like this. Uh, New Living Translation, uh, God saves you by his grace. Uh when you believed, you see, you, you got saved by grace when you believed, N not when you act, not when you gave your tithe, not when you came to church. See, see, if you're not careful, people tell you, you got to tithe and you got to go to church. Uh, I, I found out that I get to tithe and I get to go to church. Glory to God. I get to do these things now. Because I'm right with God. Why? Because I believed just like Abraham did. And Abraham is the father of those who are faithful. And so if, if, when he believed, it was accounted to him as righteousness. Now when you believe, it's accounted to you uh, as righteousness. But what do you believe? You believe that Christ died for you. That he paid for all your sins, past, present, and future. I, 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 I'll say it like this. All your sins were future sins when Christ died. There you go. There you go. So whatever happens tomorrow, he paid for that. He paid for that. All right. Watch this. Uh, God saved you by, by his grace when you believe. And uh, you can't take credit for this. That's, I like that New Living Translation. And you can't take any credit for your salvation. You can't take any, any credit for your righteousness. You can't take any credit for your holiness. It is a gift from God. Verse nine, watch this. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So I, I, I don't care how much good you're doing. Your salvation is not a reward for that. You're doing good because you are saved. Glory to God. Listen, there's a lot of people who do good things that are on their way to hell because they don't have the savior. And yes, people can do good things. There's, there's a little bit of good in all of us. You know, we, we can ink it out. Uh, but I'm telling you, that does not mean you're on your way to heaven. It means that you just did some good stuff. So your goodness, the things you do good, that is not salvation is not a reward for that. You do good because you do or you are saved now. You have received Christ as Savior, as Lord. And here's another thing. You can't make him 
what he already is. So you can't make him the Lord of your life. You can't make him your savior. You have to receive him as such. And I don't care if you receive him or not. He's still savior. He's still Lord. No other name under heaven and earth whereby men might be saved, but by the name of Yeshua. So you, you better get that one. You better get that one. So hold on to it now. Hold on to it. We got a little bit further to go. Romans chapter six. Romans chapter six. Uh, and I'm going to look at a couple of verses here in Romans chapter six. We're going to look at verse 14. Uh, I think we'll go to verse 18. This time we're going to the King James. Verse 14 says, for sin shall have no dominion over you. For you are not under the law. But under grace, the new living says that sin is no longer your master. Oh, you don't have to sin, child of God. Hear me real good. There's no way that you can convince me. You can't convince any of the angels nor your nosy neighbor that you had to do it. There's no way. Listen, if you're sinning now and you're born again, you receive Christ. If you're sinning now, it's because you wanted to do it. It's because you like it. And what you need to do now is you need to keep your eyes on him who is the author and the finisher of faith. If you keep your eyes on him, you'll find out that you sin less. But if you are trying to do good to get good, if you are trying to work your way to heaven, you're keeping the focus on you and you have never been good enough to save yourself. You can't even save your child. You know your child that's ripping and running, going here, there, and yonder, doing whatever they want to, big and bad and bold. You can't even save them. So how in the world can you save yourself? You better keep your eye on what Christ has done for you. You better look, there's a scripture said, looking under Jesus, who's the author and finish of faith. You better keep your eye on him because it's because of him that you're saved. Listen, uh, you're saved by grace when you believed on him. Well, why would you get saved and stop? believing on him. Stop focusing on him. Start turning it around and looking at yourself. I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I want you to see this next next uh, verse of scripture. J -j give me a minute. Here we go. Verse 15 says, what then shall we uh, sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Now, that's the strongest way to say, heck no. That, no. No, we're not going to go out there and live all willy-nilly. No, we're not doing that. God forbid. Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servant you are to whom you obey, whether unto sin, uh, unto death, or uh, obedience unto righteousness. But but God be thanks that you were servants of sin. You were servants of sin, uh, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which uh, was delivered to you. What was delivered to you? By Christ and by Christ alone. You believed on Christ. He's the He's He's the one that delivered you. He's your Savior. He's your. I, I'm not no longer looking at myself. I'm no longer focusing in on how obedient I am, how good I am. You know, when when I focus on Christ, I had to ask myself, when was the last time I did that? Man, I haven't done that in a long time. Man, I used. I remember when I that used to turn me on. I used to couldn't stop uh, doing that, but I kept focusing. Focusing on what Christ has done for me. And I stopped focusing on me trying to keep from doing it. Glory to God. And all I just keep just keep holding on to him. You know, you you like the old folks say, put your hand in the in in the un what is it? Unwinding chain or, or some winding chain. You know that stuff they used to say back then. But you gotta stay focused on him. You gotta he's got to be your life. Oh, dad is right there. We live, move, and have our being in him. Yeah. Yeah, we live, move, have our being in him. So now let's go to this other scripture. And I want you to see this one in the New Living. Uh, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. This is a blessing, man. Verse 1. And we're going to try to uh, knock out uh, 1 to 5. 1 to 5, I believe. Maybe 1 to 4. Here we go. Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart or or the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. So 
So Paul said in, in, in Romans 10, 10 and 1 in the, in the King James that my desire for Israel is that they might be saved. Um, you have to, oh Lord, uh, when I, when I talk about Israel, I, I'm talking about, uh, Judah, Hebrews, us, we, the people. Um, uh, so the desire, uh, that Paul had for his people was that they be saved. Okay. That's the whole thing. Then he's going to explain what keeps them from salvation, what keeps them from real salvation, what keeps you questioning your salvation. Check this out. Verse two, I know what enthusiasm they have for uh, uh, the most high, but it's a misdirected zeal. Paul, Paul again, King James said that, uh, uh, that they have a zeal of, of God, but not according to knowledge. Notice here he says, they have this real enthusiasm. And, and you know people like that. You you may be one of them. I, I mean, just excited about the things of God. I mean, you man, you you go to church and shout. You run up and down the aisle. Uh, every time somebody see you, you're talking about how blessed you are. Oh, how you know, blessed and highly favored, child. The Lord's good. You know, all that, all that stuff. But but then you you get caught up. Uh, you you you're the one that now shame because you're pregnant. You you're the one that 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 got caught up on on social media drinking you and smoking you and running around with this and doing that. But you were just excited. You had all this enthusiasm. What happened? He says, "Listen, it's because your your zeal is misdirected." It's been towards you the whole time. It's it's been towards you not making the mistakes. It's it's been it's been towards you not coming up short. It's been you. Uh, oh, I got to pay my tithe. Oh, I'm a tithe payer. It's it's you. Oh, I'm gonna be in church. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the first one there, the last one to leave. It, it's oh, they're having this at the church. I got to go. It, it's you that has the zeal pointed towards you. It's you trying to be God yourself. It's you that's been trying to be the Holy Spirit in your own life. It's all about you. It's misdirected. When it should have been towards Christ, it has always been towards you. And you're the one that keeps falling. You're the one that has to go back to the altar again. You're the one that keeps saying, I need prayer. Uh, you're the one that's shaking your head and wringing your hands because it just don't seem to be working for me. I, I don't know why. I, I, and then you say, well, some of you say, well, what the, what the heck? I, I may as well go on out there and do what I'm going to do because this ain't working. Because all of your attention is towards you and what you can do, what you what you can stop and what you gave up and your focus should be on him. Watch this. He says, I, I know what enthusiasm they have for 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 God, but it's misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law, by trying to dot every I and cross every T instead of focusing on looking unto him. Verse four, for Christ has already, listen to this, Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. He did that in his own self. He says, listen, not one jot nor tittle of the law shall fail, but I come to fulfill it, not to destroy it. I come to complete this thing. I come to declare it is finished. That's what Christ did. Notice, 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 notice. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right. With all who believe, not all who uh, watch the clock and try to keep a, a straight face or don't look over here, don't go over there, don't touch, the, touch not, taste not, handle not. No, baby. It's because of what Christ has done. Oh, my time's getting away from me. Listen, let me give you, let me give you something else. John chapter, John chapter uh, 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 one, first John chapter, first John chapter two. I got to get out of here. First John chapter two. Oh, I, 
I, I sure hope this is blessing somebody. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to encourage the body of Christ. First John chapter, chapter two, verse one says it like this. My dear children, uh, I, I'm writing uh, this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the father. He is Jesus Christ, uh, the one who is truly righteous. Verse two, he himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, not only our sin, but the sins of the whole world. Oh, the sacrifice that Christ has made has atoned for all our sins. You are supposed to understand that you should have no more sin conscious. You are no longer full of guilt and condemnation. You are no longer shame because of what Christ has done. Listen, he didn't say that you wouldn't sin. He said, if you do sin, you have an advocate with the father. Watch verse three. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. Now, here we go, because people are all upset about you got to keep the commandments. If you don't keep the commandments, if you don't keep the law, you 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 this and you that and you you're not going to make it. So I, I, I got to get it cut it short here. But watch this. But those who obey God's word, those who obey God's word truly shows how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. So watch this, John chapter 13. Let's go there. And we're going to end with this. John chapter 13, because people are getting caught up on the commandments, man. I, I, these commandments are wearing me out. I got to keep, I got to keep the commandments. I got to keep all 10. If I don't keep all 10, I'm in trouble. And listen, if you just obey his word, you'll show how much you love him. And this thing about love fulfills all the commandments. Glory to God. Every commandment is taken care of by love. Listen, if I walk in love, I'm not going to fool with your wife. If I walk in love, I'm not going to cover your dog, your car, your house, your cat. Uh, your horse, I'm not going to covet any of that. I'm not going to steal. Come on. I'm not going to bear false witness. I'm not going to lie. Watch this. If I walk in love, uh, like he said, walk in love, I'm not going to be ugly with my words towards you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I'm going to keep the 10 and the 613 too, all in the fulfilling of the one. When you fulfill that one, you kept them all. Listen to me real good. Here it is. John 13 and 34. So now I get, I, I, I am giving you a new commandment. That is, everybody's trying to get you to keep the law, keep the 10. Uh, they forever. Yes, they are forever. But it's all summed up in this one commandment. This all summed up in this one commandment. You, you stop it. Stop it. You, 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 you're going to have to check your clothes. You're going to have to get the uh, fringes on your clothes. You're going to have to do uh, all kinds of, you're going to have to uh, stop sending text messages after a certain time. You, you can't be on the internet. All of that stuff is law. But this one commandment, he said, listen, verse 34, New Living Translation, I believe I'm in. He says, so, 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 so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Verse 35, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. This thing that Christ has done for you has taken the toil out of it. It's taken the hard work out of it. It's taken the striving out of it. Now, you just got to learn how to love. And notice he says, when you, when you love one another, as I have loved you, it proves to the whole world that you're my disciple. 
Proofs to the whole world that you belong to me. Proofs to the whole world that you are born again. And that's what grace is all about. To get the struggle off of you. To take the weight off your shoulder. God bless you. God keep you. I pray, I, I pray you got something tonight. Listen, please like and share this message so we can get it out there. So people can know what this word is all about. Like and share. Don't forget that you can join us any Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Uh, right here on uh, Facebook or YouTube. Uh, there's a there's a uh, link in the description for our YouTube channel. Uh, this message and other messages will be on our YouTube channel. So please uh, come on, be a part of it. Uh, if you like, you can support the ministry. There's a, there's a description there in, uh, in the description, link in the description for that as well. We love you. We'll see you on next Monday. God bless you.